This video was produced for demonstration purposes only to show how Argo operates in extreme conditions. All drivers appearing in this video are highly skilled Argo drivers who may have years of experience. ODG recommends that all Argo drivers wear helmets, eye protection, and when operating in water, personal flotation devices. Please follow all warnings labeled on the vehicle and listed in the Argo Operator's Manual. For more information, view the Argo Safety Operator video. Remember, drive responsibly and safely. You are about to embark on the most amazing AT adventure ever. In August of 2005, Argo owners from California and Nevada assembled at Lake Tahoe to begin what has become known as the Argo Rubicon Expedition. The leader of this band of off-road enthusiasts was Don Jones, owner and operator of Four Seasons Argo in Carson City, Nevada. For those of you who are not familiar with the Rubicon Trail, it is one of the most famous, if not infamous, off-road trails in the world. The eastern trailhead is located in Tahoma, California on the western shore of beautiful Lake Tahoe. The trail dates back at least to the 1950s as many of our parents traveled over the trail then known as the Georgetown Trail in Jeeps. The preparation for the trip is quite extensive. The participants each take spare parts, spare tires, and gear they need to spend the night. The trail out of Tahoma starts out fairly tame and the group soon arrived at Miller Lake. Shortly after leaving Miller Lake, the trail gets a little more challenging. The trail is extensively used by Jeeps and other extreme 4x4 vehicles. These vehicles are more top heavy than Argo and rollover can be common. The new Argo Avenger was built for extreme conditions like the Rubicon. Its polyethylene body absorbs the impact of the Rubicon and begs for more. The 26 horsepower Kohler engine and rugged 25 inch tires just seem to flatten out the trail. Though sections of the trail give the impression you will be getting a break, the Rubicon can turn nasty again at any moment. You will notice all kinds of wood and rocks stacked on the trail to aid vehicles over some of the most difficult sections. The trail into Rubicon Springs winds through a high alpine forest into the Tahoe National Forest and takes us to Cadillac Hill. I am only guessing but I wonder if this area is so named because the cost of a lot of Cadillacs has been spent getting over this hill. Rubicon Springs is a small outpost on a trail that is supported entirely by helicopter. Jeep trips usually spend the night here our group stopped to regroup and discuss their progress. After a short stop, Wagon Master Don Jones briefs the drivers for the next section of the trail. While you're watching the vehicles traverse over these large rocks, let's talk a little bit about our tires. Argo vehicles typically operate with very low tire pressure to create some suspension. On a trail like this, we have found that we have to increase the tire pressure significantly to keep those bone jarring rocks from damaging the tires or knocking them off the rim and letting the air out. You will also notice that on some of the vehicles, steel reinforcement rings have been welded to the Argo rims to prevent these rims from being damaged. As the group moved west from Rubicon Springs, they encounter a section of the Rubicon River that covers the trail. The durable lower body and amphibious capabilities of the Argo make these water crossing a snap. Even when the water gets deep, the Argo gets through using its tires to swim through the water. 
Always wear an improved PFD when operating the vehicle in water. The trail crosses the Rubicon River over this bridge. You can see that by these trees stacked up against the bridge that the Rubicon River rages through this area during spring runoff. The next section of the trail is known as the Rock Garden. As you watch Blair Tomlinson traverse his way through this challenging part of the trail, think about how the 4x4 vehicle would have to crawl over each rock individually. The great thing about an Argo is that with its long row of tires, it is able to bridge across groups of rocks. At this point, the trail goes up about four feet over this ledge. You will see the Argos make short work of this obstacle. As one of the most challenging trails in the U.S., the Rubicon does inflict some damage. Luckily, the Argo vehicles are only vulnerable where the rubber meets the road. Unlike 4x4 ATVs and Jeeps that have their undersides exposed to this carnage, the Argo has a sealed skid pan, protected underbody, that resists all but most of the painful bumps and jolts. The tires, however, do take a beating. Due to the fact that the load is shared by eight tires, the changing of tires can be delayed without damage until the vehicle is in a safe spot for repair. Tire changing sessions become much needed breaks for food, water, and cussing and discussing the trail. There was one Argo 6x6 with the group this year. Robert Sherez went with us in 2004 and opted to spend the night in Rubicon Springs. He was bound and determined to get all the way to Loon Lake this year. Let's watch Bob take his Argo Vanguard through. I want you to watch these shots of Jeep Rubicon. Notice how slowly they have to work over these rocks one wheel at a time. Most of these guys also use a spotter as we see here. It really doesn't matter what you take over this trail, it is tough. The trail takes a toll on whoever dares to pass. As Don and Dax Jones try this section, discretion becomes a better part of valor. Sometimes a little different line and some help from your friends is all you need. After some more water fun, the next challenge is Big Sluice Box. Toward the top of Big Sluice Box is a switchback called V-Rock. Here, Blair has to get himself up onto the rock and pivot the Argo around to realign with the trail. That is a fairly simple thing for an Argo, but certainly it's a bit more challenging for the 4x4s behind us. <laughs> this magnificent place is Buck Island Lake. Here the group stop for a bite of lunch, some fellowship, and a couple more tire changes. Back on the trail, the group heads towards Granite Slab. As you see the trail come up out of the water, you see oil trail leading up the rocks. As we told you earlier, this trail takes its toll on vehicles' vital organs. Let's point out here that the Argo does not have any vital organs exposed to the trail and any oil leakage would be contained within the hull of this vehicle. None of these oil trails would ever come from an Argo. Granite slab is a section of the trail that is one giant monolithic slab of granite. Although nature has eroded it away to some degree, it remains today the closest thing to a parking lot they have seen today. Near Little Sluice Box, the group encountered this ledge. We will watch as they each use their best skills and some teamwork to get down.
scares me every time. As they near Loon Lake, the next section is known as Granite Bowl. Granite Bowl leads up to Gatekeeper, the last obstacle before Loon Lake. Gatekeeper is so named because for people taking the trail east from Loon Lake, Gatekeeper is said to be the toughest obstacle here. So if you can get through the Gatekeeper, you should be able to go all the way to Tahoma. After over nine hours on the trail, the group arrived at Loon Lake. They made camp at the wooded area across from the RV campground. The first order of business was a cold drink, followed by a bath in the lake and dinner. A wonderful Texas barbecue dinner was prepared by JR's Texas Barbecue of Sacramento, California, and provided by the writer's sponsor, Point West Argo of Yuba City, California. Many of the participants stayed up late and discussed the day's events around the fire pit. But everyone knew that they would need some sleep tonight because tomorrow they have to do it all over again. But this time, they have to go back from where they started. <laughs>